What is up guys, Wrestling Premiere is here. Okay, it's been a long ass time since I made a Randy Orton video, and specifically it's been 5 months since I last made a Legacy video. And seeing as I won the poll yesterday, and yes, I will make those eventually, I also scrolled through my past videos to find sequels of videos I haven't done. I found DX's feud with the McMahons, that has yet to be made, Jericho and Edge's feud, which I promised after Jericho's show, and honestly, when I find the right time, I'll definitely make them. But for today, I thought it'd be cool to revisit Legacy. I wanted to do this for a couple of weeks now, but I just haven't found the timing. Seeing as it's been 51 weeks since the first video in the series was uploaded, I thought, you know what, perfect time. So if you haven't watched the last videos, here they are. If you want to watch them, check them out. Uh, it's about the formings of Legacy and how they became the top group on Raw. So for this one, I'm going to pick off right where I left off, Night of Champions. This video will feature Legacy's feuds with John Cena and DX. And the next part of this series will hopefully feature the conclusion of these feuds, and Orton's story with Kofi Kingston. I'll probably compile them all into one video once the series is officially done. Now, I gotta ask you a question. Whenever you hear that song, It's a New Day, don't you just think of SVR 2010 and 11? Like, if you don't, I believe there's only one reason. That's because you probably haven't played the games, I believe. It's just that song that takes me back to that time period. It's weird. Anyways, let's get into it. So at this point, Randy Orton was a bald, crazy WWE champion. He lived and died for the title, and it seemed like the title was his religion. Rhodes and DiBiase were targeting a certain game, and from a personal standpoint, let's just say I wasn't such a big fan of them. Their main priority was to keep the title on Orton's waist, that's all. Fans were expecting those two to break free from the Viper because of how verbally and occasionally physically abusive he was towards them. Now... Randy Orton, he didn't really have anything to do the night after Night of Champions, but there was an ongoing Beat the Clock challenge to determine who faces him for the title at SummerSlam. In order to ensure Randy Orton gets some easy competition, Ted DiBiase assaulted Triple H ahead of his match with Cody Rhodes. He blasted him with a club, and Cody walked out to the rink. Triple H's knee was isolated by Rhodes, and he struggled to wrap it up early. Near the end, though, momentum was certainly on the game side. The fans began cheering, but then Ted DiBiase stood on the apron. This distraction affected the game, as when Triple H hit the pedigree, he hit it with one second remaining, meaning he failed to beat the clock. The duo had a smile of sorts on their face in the game's response to this. Well, he was disappointed in himself for not expecting this. He realized that he should have went after them earlier because in the previous matches with Orton, it was always Legacy that bailed him out. He then straight up issued a challenge for Rhodes and DiBiase in a handicap match for the following week. As for the winner of the Beat the Clock challenge, it was John Cena. Now, out of context. One gripe many have about 2009 is the fact the main event scene never really changed from February all the way up to November. The title scene was dominated by John Cena, Triple H, and Randy Orton, and it kind of annoyed some fans. But looking back, yeah, it, it's kind of repetitive to see these guys around the area when you could have elevated guys like MVP and Mark Henry. Yeah, if I was much older during this time period, I'd probably be annoyed. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyways, Triple H didn't get the job done as he struggled to get through the second and third generation stars. And weirdly enough, he technically lost the match clean. You'd think there would be some sort of shenanigans with this one, but there wasn't. I guess they were really high in legacy. Triple H saw the effects of the beating before bringing sarcasm into the conversation. He doubted Legacy's abilities, and he teased starting a new group. Scratch that, bringing one back. He teased Evolution, but then he asked the fans if he should just make one phone call. Now, if you watched the promo back then, you definitely knew who he was talking about. Meanwhile, Randy Orton was looking to wear down Triple H weeks ahead of SummerSlam, as Cena was set to face the Miz in a Lumberjack match that night. Orton observed this match from a distance, and it had some shenanigans. Orton and Legacy attacked, the Lumberjacks didn't even touch Miz, and despite all of this, Cena won with the AA. After the match, however, freaking Jeremy Piven, Ari Gold, soared in the air, looking to crossbody Cena. He failed, and then Mr. Chow got involved. The poor guy got thrown out unceremoniously on his head. So Orton's plan wasn't successful. As for Rhodes and DiBiase, they were sort of in for a rude awakening because Triple H did find the old friend at a restaurant. Shawn Michaels was spoken down to, and the only reason why he became a cook, a chef, was because of the loss at WrestleMania. It haunted him, and even Triple H was flipping burgers in an effort to get HBK to appear at Summerfest. Eventually, Michaels grew frustrated with the job and super kicked the boss before super kicking the daughter. <laughs> Meanwhile, Orin and Cena were set to team up on the final Raw before SummerSlam. Before they teamed up, however, Orton, with a buzz cut and a menacing look, decided to confront the Raw guest host, Freddie Prince Jr. Now, if you don't know him, he had a couple of box office draws a few years earlier. He was the son of Freddie Prince, and at this point, he took up the hardest job in the world. A writer for WWE. He tried convincing Orton that this is his hometown, St. Louis, obviously, and the champ believed he had nothing in common with these people, and he refused to ask twice, and simply put, he wanted out of the match. He refused to ask twice, for that request. Freddie asked Orin if he's like Seth Green and Jeremy Piven, and he refused to be bossed by the Viper. 
as he was leaving, Orin grabbed him and he was like, what the hell is going on? And boom, he received a backbreaker. So the match was still on. Also, Mandela Effect got me. I thought he hit the RKO at that moment. As for Rhodes and DiBiase, they ambushed DX during the return segment. Triple H tried fighting back, but a chop block silenced him. In the end, Rhodes blasted the game with Michaels' boot twice. They accepted DX's Summerfest challenge, and it was on. Legacy versus DX at SummerSlam. The young duo are starting to get used to being somewhat a focal point of the show, and the victory at the pay-per-view would have definitely helped them in the long run. Later that night, Randy Orton teamed up with Cena to face Jericho. At face value, it seemed like Orton was working as a babyface, but he wasn't. Initially, he refused to accept Cena's tag, but during the match, he took all that punishment, and he just couldn't get the tag himself. Every opening was quickly shut down by Jericho and Big Show, but then Y2J missed the lion's salt, and finally that tag was made. Cena had all the momentum as expected, and he hit the AA on Jericho to win the match. Kofi was Cena's biggest fan, as you can see here, and right when the bell rang, the snick struck with a sudden RKO. Jericho continued the assault, but by the end of it, with some help from Evan Bourne and Kofi Kingston, Cena stood tall to end the show. As for SummerSlam, Legacy had two marquee matches. Orton defended the title against Cena, and I personally didn't feel that match. I'll get into it soon. But first, I'm going to focus on Legacy versus DX. Now, this match was awesome. I want to say it was underrated, but for how good it was, I don't hear about it that much. Why was it so good in my eyes? Up to this point, it was both Rhodes and DiBiase's best match, in my opinion, and it felt like the coming out party for the duo. They felt comfortable in there with DX. They dictated the pace and managed to isolate Triple H and Shawn Michaels at a moment's notice. And whenever they made a mistake, they easily compensated, and like the commentary team stated, Legacy was one step ahead of DX. Then DX got their stuff together and managed to teach the young guys a lesson. When the young guys got a chance to regain control, they showed their inexperience in these big match situations. Also, it didn't seem out of this world for Rhodes and DiBiase winning clean, and at one point they were going to do just that. And the ending in itself didn't really hurt them. HBK managed to muster up all the energy he had in him to super kick Rhodes and barely, and I mean barely, win the match. That's why I like this match. They told a story there that was easy to follow. Young guys showed that they were actually good enough to beat DX, and it's just their inexperience and arrogance that cost them. Overall, a very enjoyable match in my eyes. As for Randy Orton's match with John Cena, oh man, I just didn't like it. You wouldn't think these two had a classic two years earlier if you watched this for the first time. You just wouldn't believe it. And in a way, it felt like a Raw match from 2020. <laughs> also, had they never overbooked this match, I personally feel it could have been decent. It was stop and start, stop and start, and I'm not even joking. Let me just describe the shenanigans that occurred during the match. Orin managed to isolate Cena in the beginning, Cena made a comeback, and momentum was completely on his side, and it seemed like the match wasn't going to be bad, but then Orin shoves the ref to cause the DQ. Then Lilia Garcia announced that per Vince McMahon, the match is restarted, and if Orin gets disqualified, he loses the title. So what does Orin do this time? He walks out in order to get counted out. Lilian Garcia then reveals her Mr. McMahon that if Orin gets counted out, he loses the title. Like seriously, what the hell? Why not just make it no DQ with Legacy Bard or something? Then Orin decides to use the rope for leverage to retain the title, and then this snitch in informs the ref that Orton's feet were on the ropes, and he actually believed them. Cena locks the champion in the STF, but before he knew it, a fan enters the ring for no reason, but he was quickly ejected. Once the ref restarted the match, Orton hung Cena from the ropes with an RKO before hitting the move again to win the match. This time, it wasn't restarted, which is weird to me, but for context, Orin at this point wasn't believed to have anything to do with the fan. I guess that's my explanation, but yeah, it was confusing. Overall, this match is kind of hard to get into because of the restarts. And also, since Cena was the top star, they were too scared to have Orton beat him clean. I don't get why. Like, he's somewhat equal to John Cena at this point. Another thing to mention is that, personally, Cena and Orin's matches are hit and miss. The worst of the matches always have some sort of bad finish for some reason. Like, Unforgiven 2007, this... There's a couple of others that I didn't mention. The next night on Raw, Randy Orton revealed that he didn't have anything to do with the fan. Unknowingly to him, it was actually Ted DiBiase's brother, Brett. Orton reprimanded his actions and assured everyone that it will never happen again. Later that night, Legacy got the chance to face DX and Mr. McMahon on his birthday. Orton was salivating at this opportunity because Vince booked him in an I Quit match against Cena at Breaking Point. Now about that match, Legacy didn't make good on their intentions. Orton nearly did, and he had a look of terror... A look of inflicting pain, but then HBK prevented him from doing so, and if that wasn't enough, John Cena came out and he threw Orin back into the ring, where he received the sweet chin music, and then the AA. Vince covered him to get a sweet birthday present. The following week, though, things took a turn for the second and third generation trio. On that night, Dusty Rhodes was set to host Raw. Right out of the gate, Dusty acknowledged his son's allegiance with Randy Orton, and he showed some nepotism by booking Cody in a WWE Championship match against Randy Orton. And not only that, a special referee for the match is John Cena. 
right after hearing this rant, Yorn stormed out to the ring in a state of anger. Orn believed Dusty was jealous that his son looks up to him more than he's ever looked up to his father and tried to make up for his shortcomings as a father. He books his son in a title match. He even asked Dusty for a reason. Like, give me one reason why I shouldn't punch you. That's what he said. Cody then came out and he refused to pass this opportunity. He said that it was golden and Cody, he wanted to follow in his leader's footsteps by becoming the youngest WWE champion. He informed the Viper that it's business and it has nothing to do with Orton personally. The champion himself didn't believe he had a fighting chance because of all the disadvantages. Orton looked at Cody like a disappointed father, and yeah, that's just basically it. Later on, Orton confronted Rose on this, and he took a jab at Cody's business statement, implying he's gonna punt him, you know? Oh, whatever happens in there, it's just business. As for how the match went, well, Orton came out somewhat composed, although it's hard to tell. Cody himself was being motivated by his father to grab that non-existent brass ring, and right when the bell was about to ring, Dusty Rhodes apologized to John Cena when Legacy pounced. Jerry Lawler was like, what? What is this? And Michael Cole's response. DX tried to make the save. They failed after Dusty Rhodes blasted Triple H with his boots. Rhodes connected with Crossroads and Legacy stood tall. And look at that lunatic. He just loves it when the plan comes together. And another thing to mention is Dusty himself. You'd think he'd be like every other legend and side against the bad guys because he's good. But logically, he thought for his son's best interests. And Randy was thankful. So thankful he delivered an R. KO. And it was about to erupt. Crazy guy turns on helpful guy, and helpful guy's son can't do anything about it because crazy man might shun him. This was what I was talking about earlier. Cody and Ted had motives for going after Orin, and during this moment, it seemed like a matter of time before Legacy imploded. Cody addressed this the following week, and he downplayed the rumors of his departure from Legacy. He did disagree with Orin's actions, but he realized that it wasn't his father that made him a star. It was Randy Orton, and this is going to be proven true when he and Ted DiBiase make DX tap out at breaking point. Then he got his ass kicked by John Cena, but Orin was there to cause a DQ. This didn't derail Cena's momentum, and once again, the champion stood on the ramp in a state of disappointment and worry. Later that night, Orin teamed up with Chris Masters in a losing effort to DX. Legacy brawled with DX all over the place, they bounced off the walls in the back, they were trashed, and Rhodes and DiBiase realized that this wasn't their fight, and took a page from GTA in order to get the hell out of there. In the ring, Randy Orton promised a victory for himself and Legacy at breaking point, and then John Cena came out. They brawled once again, Cena kicked his ass, but at a moment's notice, it was lights out. For Cena. He then brought in a chair and RKO'd him right onto it. And like I said, 2009 Randy Orton was just too crazy. He relished that title and it seemed like the only thing he lived for. Well, scratch that, he actually said that during the segment. And the amount of stuff he did in order to win the title showed just how much of a snake he was. As for how their matches at Breaking Point went, the submissions count anywhere match to me was pretty good. It really established Legacy as the team. Before this feud with DX, they were just Randy Orton's lackeys that barely won their tag matches. DX matches really helped bring out that fury. Like, we all knew they were Orton's buddies, but these matches brought out the fire in Legacy, the dirty side that showed how vicious and how rough they will be in order to get the W. It showed that they weren't some regular second generation stars. They knew how to back up that bragging they were doing in the ring. Also, I find it funny that after 12 years, Montreal still disliked Shawn Michaels. So the match itself was full of drama. They locked each other in brutal holds, punishing one another. And every time the match was won, the other teammate came in to break the hold. Shawn was thrown out of the stands, and this is where Legacy showed their intelligence. Despite getting their asses beat, they isolated Triple H in order to force a submission. Mission. This tactic was proven to be ineffective because the game had too much fight in it. So what did they decide to do? They decided to knock him down and opt for plan B. Go after Shawn Michaels. This would pay dividends for Legacy as they stuck HBK in the post, locked him in a figure four and million dollar dream. Triple H tried crawling to save his partner, but it was too little and it was too late. And yes, Legacy really made men do to the victory. Like how many guys got HBK to tap out? Not many, and it showed that WWE were really high on the duo. That's what I think. I thought this match really helped them in the long run if they weren't to book them like they did a couple of months later. As for how Randy Orton's I Quit match went, once again, it's subjective. You either liked it or you hated it. Now, personally, out of every match they had, this one had the best storytelling, and I believe if it was anyone other than Cena in this match, it would be even more well-received. The reason why I think many don't really like it is because it was super Cena. He got his ass beat, and he came back, basically. Now, the match itself, it was like a glimpse into Orin's mind. He tortured the living hell out of Cena. He pushed him to the very limits with kendo sticks, handcuffs, and with every shot, Cena began doubting himself. He didn't know if he could survive this onslaught. There were free shots all around, and at one point, Cena was very defiant and refusing to quit. So it meant more punishment. Orin couldn't believe Cena said no and he bought some time to escape. Despite being away from the post, Cena was still handcuffed and the crowd was silent. Orin brought in a chair, the champ was like, what the hell do I have to do? And right then, though, 
he made a mistake which led to Cena unlocking himself. Instead, though, he decides to lock himself with Orin. Orin realizes that he's screwed. He's blowing the air. He's like, oh no, what the hell do I gotta do? And Cena let out all that ruthless aggression on the champion. Despite all the punches, Orin was there to bounce Cena off the mat with an RKO. He tried searching for a key, but just when he found it, Cena from out of nowhere used Orin's handcuffed arm against him by locking in the STF. After a couple of seconds, Orton shouted I quit and the Montreal faithful went crazy. That's why I like this match. Cena afterwards shouted he didn't quit and that's all. Now what do you guys think about this match? Like I said, the storytelling was there. Orton tortured Cena and didn't expect it to bite him in the ass. He brought out all that aggression in Cena and that's what cost him. Cena sold all that punishment, Orton's character was top notch and he showed exactly why people think he's crazy. Okay, this is where I'm gonna end this legacy video. I know it could've been way longer, but I gotta focus on the quality of this one, to be honest. Like, if it was a feud video, yeah, I would've gone all the way, but for this one, let's preserve some for the next videos, and let's not, like, try to tarnish the quality of it. Because, to be honest, if I made this much longer, I don't think it would've been as good as this one. Yes, next video, focus on DX and Legacy Hell in a Cell, Cena Orin, Hell in a Cell, and their Iron Man match, which I personally love, and I'm probably gonna get trash for this, but that is probably my second favorite Iron Man match in WWE history. So yeah, the next Legacy video might be five months from now, maybe five days from now. Hell, it might even be the next video. Hit a like if you really do want it, but yes, it will be coming eventually. If that's our first video. Make sure you hit a crossroads on the like button, and perhaps the RK on the subscribe button. Peace, I'm out.